Okay, are we ready? Here we go. Okay. Is, it, is everybody ready? How are you doing today? All right. Father, we thank you that today you're going to do something supernatural. That today, assistance, angelic assistance that people have been waiting for is going to be released into the lives and into the homes and the ministries and the businesses of these people here. We thank you, Lord. It's not just being a word that's being taught. It's a word that's being released into the atmosphere of glory. So an activation can come and the angelic realm can be activated to come into partnership with us to help us bring the things of the kingdom of heaven to earth. We pray these things in the name of Jesus. Amen. All righty. Today we're going to talk about angels. The dictionary definition of the word angel is a celestial being that acts as an intermediary between heaven and earth. Angels are supernatural beings that assist in bringing the things of the kingdom of heaven here to earth. I'm going to be sharing with you many of the angelic encounters we've experienced and how those angelic encounters have empowered us to do the mission that God has put in our hands to do. I'm going to show you how angels help you fight war, how angels can cause you to be in the position to receive increase, how angels are used by God to assist us in bringing all the things of the kingdom of heaven to earth. I'm also going to show you how each one of the encounters that we've experienced is deeply embedded in scripture. So they're all biblical. That is, is so important. It is so important that we see every one of our experiences etched into the biblical text. That's how we'll know whether or not a visitation we're receiving is authentic or not. Plus, I'm going to show you biblically how you can receive all of the same encounters that we have. What do angels look like? According to the Bible, they take on all kinds of forms. In Ezekiel 40, it says that an angel came to visit Ezekiel and he looked like a man. Yet in Ezekiel 1, it said that there were four living creatures called cherubim and they had the likeness of of a man. You see, they had a face of the man, right? But they also had three other faces. They had a face of a lion, an eagle, and an ox. They had hands of a man, but they had feet or hooves like calves. Now in Isaiah 6, it says there were angels called seraphim, and they were, they were guarding the throne of God. They were calling out praises and worship to God who was sitting on the throne. And these angels had six wings. Yet in Revelation 4, there are four living creatures that are around the throne that are, look more like animals. One's a lion, one's an ox, and, and one's an eagle, but one also has the likeness of a man. But these four living creatures have six wings, and they're covered with eyes. Eyes all around. Why do you think they have eyes all around? Because in heaven, there's like open vision, constant revelation. They were able to see all the things they needed to see with all the eyes that covered them all about. My point I'm trying to make is this, is angels may not always be the standard looking angel that we commonly think of. You know, the men in um, sparkling gold and, and white outfits with wings Okay. The Bible says in Revelations that there are, quote, tens of thousands and tens of thousands and thousands and thousands of angels. But yet the Bible does not tell us what each one of these angels look like. It doesn't tell us what every single one of their names are. So the important thing to do is this, is we need to understand that when we have an angelic visitation, that we may not be able to find the description of that visitation line by line in scripture. However, if the visitation is authentic, then there will always be elements in it that you can readily confirm through the word of God. Okay. We have to remember what Jesus said in John six twelve. He said this, I still have many things to say to you, but you are not now able to bear it. 
What Jesus meant when he said that to his disciples was this, that there was so much going on in the kingdom of heaven, so much going on in the invisible supernatural realm, that there was no way that their human minds could totally grasp everything that was contained in the kingdom. So there are things going on in the invisible realm that aren't perfectly described in the Bible. But when you receive an angelic visitation, and it, if it is authentic, then you will always be able to confirm it through Scripture. Scripture is what's going to help us learn how to discern the spirits rightly. Okay, now I'm going to give you an example of how scripture showed me that an unusual angelic visitation that I received was truly biblical. Okay, I'm going to give you a simple example from my own experience. Um, I had a visitation from an angel. He came on a school bus. <laughs> the bus pulled up, the door opened, the angel flew out. Now he looked like a man. He wasn't really freaky looking like the four living creatures or the seraphim. He, he, he came flying out at me, and he was wearing a trench coat and sunglasses. Okay, last time I checked, there's no um, description of an angel in the Bible that's wearing a trench coat and sunglasses. So how do I know that this visitation was legitimate, it was from God, that it was authentic? Well, I went and I asked God himself, I asked the Holy Spirit to talk to me. I went before the Lord and I said, Lord, is this from you? Um, tell me, because you can let me know if it's authentic. And I got quiet. And in my mind, I heard the Lord say this to me. He said, he is your guest. Entertain him. Now, I know that some of you got that when I said that. Why is that biblical? Because that's biblical language. What does Hebrews 13 say? Do not forget or neglect or refuse to extend hospitality just to strangers. Treat them like a guest, right? Sharing the comforts of your home. Treat them like a guest. For through it, some have entertained angels without knowing it. You see, God verified to me that this was one of those tens of thousands of tens of thousands of angels that weren't listed in the Bible. Verified that this was a biblical, accurate encounter by speaking to me in biblical language. As soon as he said that, I went, oh, and I felt that peace of God enter into me. Like, okay, this is something I want to accept and bring into my house. I want to treat this angel like a guest. Do you see that? And why else? Why else would that, would that visitation be biblical? Because of the school bus. How so? Well, what does it say in Galatians 3, 19? It says, and the law, the law, which is instruction, right? Was arranged, ordained, and appointed through the instrumentality of angels. You see, God uses angels to bring us instruction. He used angels to bring the instruction of the law. Thus the school bus. Hello? Do you see? Do you understand? Do you understand how God will talk to you in a language that you can understand, but that language will still be biblical? And if you don't understand it, then what do you do? You dig in yourself and you look. You do some research and study to find out. You go before the Holy Spirit. You get quiet. You ask him. And then you look at the scriptures he's pointing out to you. And you will find your answer. Angels can look like and come in many different forms. And angels are here to help us. They are here to bring the things of heaven to earth. Does the Bible actually prove that? Yes, it does. Remember in Genesis 28 where Jacob experienced an open heaven? Listen to what happened in verse 12. It says this, And he dreamed there was a ladder set up on earth, and the top of it reached to heaven, and the angels of God were ascending and descending on it. And there above it stood the Lord. Now see, according to the scripture, the angels were ascending into heaven and then descending back down to earth. Is that a pretty strange order? You would think it would be the other way around, wouldn't you? That they would descend first and then ascend up in heaven? Why do you think they were operating in that, in that unique order? Because Hebrews 1.14 says that angels are ministering spirits sent to minister to those who would receive salvation. You see, there are angels that are already at work down here Amen. on planet earth. Okay, so see that day when Jacob saw angels first descending, he was seeing the angels that were already down here at work on earth. And what does it say that that day when the angels were ascending and descending that at the top of the ladder, God was standing there and he was speaking promises over Jacob. 
Now, if you look at Psalms 1 and 3, it says that the angels hearkened to the voice of his word. So do you see what was happening? There were angels already down here at work. God's at the top of the ladder. He's speaking promises over Jacob. And then the angels hearkened to the voice of the Lord. And they ascended up into heaven to get the stuff that was needed, the supernatural goodies that were needed to make those promises come to pass. And then they descended back down the ladder to bring them here. You understand? That's what angels do. Mm. How many want angels to help you out? Amen. Amen. Jesus himself talked about angels ascending in that particular order. In John 1, Jesus is talking to Nathanael, and he says this to him. I assure you most solemnly, I tell you all, you shall see heaven open, hallelujah, and the angels of God ascending and descending. There's that strange order again. The angels first ascending into heaven, then descending back down to earth. Why? Because once again, angels, there are angels that are down here that are sent to minister to us. When Jesus was on earth, there were angels that ministered to him. Remember when he was uh, doing the 40-day fast in Mark 1? What happened at the end of the fast? It said that angels came to attend Jesus. Remember in, in Mark 22, or in Luke 22, when Jesus is preparing for the crucifixion in the Garden of Gethsemane? What happened at, at the end of that, that torrential moment when he gave his will over completely to God? An angel came and strengthened him. While Jesus was here on earth, angels attended to him. And according to scripture and according to Jesus himself in his discussion with Nathaniel, whenever Jesus needed supernatural help, the angels that attended him would first ascend into heaven to get the stuff he needed and then to send back down to earth to bring it to him. Hallelujah. Now, if Jesus did that, I want it too. If Jesus utilized the presence of angels in his life, I want whatever he wanted. I want whatever he did. Amen. Angels are used by God to help us in a multitude of different ways. You have to understand the vastness of all the things that angels can do for us. Angels are sent out by God to rescue us from danger. In Genesis 19, two angels went to Sodom and Gomorrah to take Lot and his family out before the city was destroyed. Right? Angels are used to bring us provisions. In 1 Kings 19, an angel brought Elisha a loaf of bread and some water while he was running for his life from Jezebel. And angels are used to bring us wisdom and revelation. In Daniel 10, Daniel was fasting for 21 days so that he could have insight and understanding. And at the end of the 21-day fast, an angel showed up. In Exodus 23, the Lord himself told the Israelites that he would send an angel before them to guide them on the way and also to take them to the place that he was sending them. See, angels are used even to guide you into the promised land. Oh, whoa, Jesus. Amen. In Daniel 10, it says that angels do battle in the heavenly spheres. In that chapter, when Gabriel came to see Daniel, he had told Daniel that he had been withstood for 21 days because himself and the archangel Michael were fighting in the, in the, against the prince of Persia in the heavenly realms. Angels also do battle down here, right down here. In 2 Chronicles 32, it says that one angel completely wiped out 185 Assyrian enemies in one night that were surrounding Jerusalem. In one night. There is no army too big for us because we have all the help of God. Who angels do so many things. Mm, thank you, God, for your supernatural help.